Welcome back to 66.6 Monster Radio. I'm your host. Our fearsome guest today is ready to shed a little light on the scaly side of the monster world. For your listening pleasure, I introduce... Uh, strange, this name has been scorched off. I can't read it. Uh, there's... Uh, what looks like child's handwriting next to it that says... Behold, I am Shrikta, princess of power and flame. Tremble before my fire. Sweet Bigfoot's memories! Oh, oh no. Ow, ow, I'm ow, so sorry. Ow, ow, I thought I was aiming ow, higher. Ow, 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 I didn't mean to hit you. Oh no. Ow. Are you okay? <sighs> I... I think I'm all right. Uh, but what in the nine realms was that? I... I tried breathing fire as part of my cosplay. But I just wanted a little spurt of fire. I was hoping it would flare up, not launch a fireball projectile at you. I'm sorry. I just wanted a dramatic, frightening entrance. Ah, I... I see. Well, you have succeeded in frightening me. I thought that was a swift end to Monster Radio for today, and fortunately for you, I had already voided my bowels after the last guest. <sighs> now then, you have incinerated all the info I had pertaining to you, so won't you introduce yourself to us? I already told you. I'm Shrieked, a princess of power, and... I thought you said that was a cosplay. That's... yeah, yeah, this is a cosplay. How could you tell? You just told me. And you have a sheet of aluminum foil over your head with what looks like a tiara drawn in crayon but, on it. But I do sheet just withering diadem on this shiny metallic surface. How are you not overwhelmed by her presence? I may not be very brave, but I have yet to be terrified by a child's drawing. Oh, I see. Yeah, I... I made this, but I'm not very good at it yet. But I'm gonna get there, you'll see. I suppose with time and effort, anything's possible. Is that what you've come to talk about today? And what is your name, anyway? Oh, I'm Caddy. Caddy the Dragon. Dad named me after the sea serpent he idolizes. And yes, I can't get Mom or Dad to give me any cosplay advice. Oh, sorry. I'm a bit large for this tiny human chair. I think nothing of it. Anyway, they say I should start acting my age and start hoarding gold and roasting villagers like a proper dragon should. But I don't want to do those things. I don't even like the taste of sheep. Or villagers, for that matter. Roasted or raw? Oh, I'm so relieved to hear this bit of news. So, your parents want you to follow a more traditionalist route? Yeah, Dad said I have to go with them on their next dragon raid. There's a king who hasn't given up his gold tithe. So Mom and Dad have to go and remind him who's the boss. But... I really don't want to go. I don't have any interest in gold or jewels, even. Don't all dragons have a horde of some kind, though? Oh, for sure. Dragons love hordes. But not all dragons hoard the same stuff. Nowadays, dragons can hoard lots of things. If a dragon thinks it has value, they'll collect all they can. I know dragons who collect books, stamps, bottle caps, stuffed animals, and even real animals. And they don't eat them. Dad says that's all a waste of time, though. He's always telling me, We're dragons, Caddy. We hoard gold and jewels, and we terrorize villagers for it. That's how your grand dragon did it, and that's how I'm doing it, and that's how you'll do it after me. <sighs> I see. A bit old school, your parents, then. I guess so. And it's not fair. I have my own things I want to hoard. And what kinds of things are those, Caddy? Well, I like... I like to collect anything pertaining to a certain place. 
an island shrouded in mystery, history, and home to some of the mightiest dragons to ever have lived. Have you heard of this mythical land called Japan? I've... I've heard vague, sometimes fascinating, sometimes unsettling rumors. It's positively magical. They have some of the coolest illustrated stories I've ever seen. They call them manga in the human world. Look at these. Whoa! These stories resonate with me on a level I have trouble describing properly. Look, here's Erst on Fire. It's the story of a young serpent who's getting into fire dancing. It delves into the thoughts and lifestyles of the fire dancers who choose to partake in this incandescent sport. That's what the front page says. First dancing is really hard, you see, and it takes dedication and training to achieve perfection in the fiery art. And all the while, you can see glimpses of what brought them to these competitions and the kinds of other reptilian friends and rivals they make along the way. Oh, I may have to introduce you to another fellow fan after the interview. I'd love that. But first, a few more questions. So, you hoard manga. I also have a large stash of figurines, posters on my cave wall for my favorite series, and a few boxes of these weird plastic discs. I think humans call them devades. I can't do anything with them, though. I just like to look at the cover art. I know humans have this thing called electricity, but like I said... Not much in the way of electricity, I'm guessing. Your family is rooted in the old ways. Dad doesn't want to negotiate with humans. He wants to maintain the status quo. Things are fine the way they are. We don't have to get caught up in every new thing. That's what he says. That and, if your friends all got slain by a knight in shining armor, would you do it too? I'm not sure I understand what he means by that. Considering I don't really have a lot of friends anyway. A dated expression about the dangers of peer pressure. I think he's trying to say, if your friends were doing it, would you do it too, even if you knew it was dangerous? Oh, but how is reading manga or collecting figurines dangerous? Hmm. Dear creepy crawlies, I'm going to avoid some subgenres of the medium. But generally speaking, I don't think manga is really dangerous. I think your father might be more worried your behavior is unlike his own, and therefore could do you long-term harm. How? I don't understand. Let's try to analyze the situation a little. Your parents have likely been doing uh, dragon things a long while, correct? Ever since they were little wormlings. Dad says he and Grand Dragon started before he could even fly. I'm already cruising on my wings, but I still haven't gone yet. And I assume you two have clashed about this at times? It sounds that way. I don't get gold or jewels. Gold can't show you new worlds. Jewels won't go on grand adventures or defeat evil villains or have saucy romances. Or... Or... <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm still getting a hang of my fire breathing. I just get choked up thinking about it. <sighs> oh, that's... That's a hell of a way to go. Well, at least your ashes are already nice and scattered, Priscilla. All over the studio. But uh, returning to the matter at hand, do you think your parents care about you? I think so. I don't know, though. Dad gets so angry when I talk about my hoard, and he's threatened a time or two to go and burn it all. Oh, my. It makes me so scared. I don't want him to do it. And I keep thinking about running away from home. Maybe I can fly all the way to that island and make my dreams come true in Japan. Mom keeps talking me out of it, though. She says Japan is a long way away, and I'm much too young to be out on my own. Hmm. 
Well, if I may offer some advice, I think the fact your parents haven't torched your collection is a sign they do care about you. But sometimes it's hard to overcome your own prejudices and traditions as a parent. They probably work hard to bring golden sheep back home, don't they? They... They sometimes come back with spears in their legs and arrows on their wings. They take turns picking them out and closing the wounds with their fire. They don't want me to see, but I sometimes go sneaking around the dead and see them when they come home. Putting their life and limb on the line to provide for their family. Now, I'm not suggesting that because of that, you give up on all your ambitions. But they were taught a way to survive, and even to thrive. From their point of view, this is a way to be sure their children enjoy long lives and grow up to have families of their own. Sure, the world has changed, but your parents... How old are they? That'll be 700 in a decade. 700? What a ripe old number. 700 years is a long time, and especially in this modern age, the customs and careers evolve so rapidly, even humans have trouble keeping up with it. I can imagine your parents are just trying to make sure you're happy, but also safe. And that security, they feel, best comes from the traditions that kept their ancestors alive and well-fed. A long, unbroken line of dragons that now culminates in the miracle that is you. So, they now pass those ways down to you. I didn't think about it that way. You think? They're just trying to make sure I know how to survive? As their grand dragons before them and on into the primeval past. It's a powerful urge in a good parent to ensure your child's future. The promise of a better tomorrow, with the blood and sweat of today. That said, there is room for growth and compromise. Perhaps you could have a talk with your parents. See if you could go out on a little raid with them and see things from their point of view. And ask politely if you could continue to grow your collection while you learn the skills your parents deem necessary for your upbringing. I could give it a try. I don't know for certain. That will solve everything. But it's a good place to start. Now then, I believe we can offer you some help in the cosplay department. Really? Let's see here. What does the Total Nincompoop's Guide to Hosting Cryptid Radio Shows have to say about this? Hmm. Coastal creatures, coconuts, continuity, cows. Oop, went too far. Here we are, cosplay. If you want to get into cosplay, you should really enjoy sewing. Sewing is an essential part to many outfits. Oh, I don't think I'd be able to use a sewing needle or a machine for the lack of electricity in small human hands. Not to worry, not to worry. Let's check the next tip. Use cardboard, styrofoam, paper bags, and newspaper for the foundation of your cosplay. You can build just about anything with enough of these materials and plenty of duct tape and paint. Those are... also flammable. Hmm. I'm starting to see the root problem here. There's not a lot of dragon-tailored cosplay out there. I was... I was a fool to even think I could try something like this. Oh, they were right. Wait! There's one last tip. Never, ever give up. You may not get it right on the first try, but with persistence comes great reward. Yeah? I think that last bit may be especially helpful in your case. That and a little, uh, expert advice. Here. What's this? This is contact information for a changeling who interviewed with Monster Radio not too long ago. Their name is Vosk. They are extremely skilled in looking like anyone. They could look like me. They could look like Priscilla. May she rest in peace. That's amazing. M Mr. Host? Oh. Yes, yes. They might be able to give you some pointers and even get you started on the right path. While they have questionable ability at altering their appearance, they still have to craft costumes to match their new personas. I think you'll find them to be a veritable font of knowledge on the subject. You do your best, Caddy. Be a good student and be willing to take advice. 
That's... I'll do my best. And try to give your parents a break. They might be old fuddy-duddies, but I think they have your best interests at heart. If they do burn your collection, though, you come see us again, and we'll see if we can't help you out more. Thank you. I'll go find Vusk right now. Truly, I wish Caddy the best. She has her heart set on cosplay, so by golly, I hope it goes well for her. But that's all for now. Until next time, creepy crawlies. Oh, Stella! Buddy old producer pal, Stella! Yeah? How excited are you to hear you might have a pal that enjoys the same literature that you do? I'm ecstatic. My word! I think I saw a flicker of emotion on your many visaged faces. Could this be the start of a beautiful friendship? Maybe. Ugh. Why do I bother? Countless interviews later, and you don't seem one for small talk. Well, let's get the next guest in, then. We can't. Priscilla's gone, and we needed a flesh vessel for the next interview. You're on cleanup. I... what? Ah! <sighs> Don't worry, Priscilla. I'm sure we can find a vase to store you in until tomorrow. Preferably one that's not haunted. Monster Radio is a podcast by Twin Strangers Productions and is licensed under an attribution share like 4.0 international license. Today's episode was directed by Stella Odom and written by Ty Vaughn. The host is played by Ty Vaughn. Caddy the Dragon is played by Kyla Crockett. Find out more about us on our Twitter account, at Monster Radio Pod, or our production account, at Twin Strangers P. New episodes every other Thursday. And you can also watch our other podcast, Syntax, on the break weeks. You can find out more about that at syntaxpodcast.com. Thanks for listening or whatever.